What is going on, YouTube Nation? This is Dark Dividend. If you guys are new to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell for free videos, dividend investing strategies. And I show you everything I buy and I provide my rationales. I'm going to provide you my rationales as to why I'm buying a few new dividend stocks. And I'm going to tell you, because of the yield max ETFs and the passive income from the yield max ETFs, I am turbocharging my dividend portfolio. I'm very excited. I have a $100,000 plus dividend portfolio. I'm going to show you some new buys that I had, and I'm going to provide my rationales. It is amazing how the Yield Max ETFs have turbocharged my dividend portfolio and really helped me with my dividend investing strategy. And I really can't do options, but Yield Max is doing it for me. And, you know, there's no guarantees with the Yield Max ETFs, but wow, what a huge day. What a huge amount of dividend stocks that I'm buying in shares. So I'm going to reveal that to you. But I'm preparing for phase two. Now, I'm messing around with some dividend stocks, flipping some around, buying some uh, new dividend stocks, um, kind of touching up on some of these. Because I like high yield dividend stocks and I like dividend growth stocks as well. Really good dividend growth stocks. So I had to go after a few sectors. I'm going to reveal that to you at the end of a, the month. If you're new to this YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Smash that like button. Let's check out my passive income right now. So my dividend portfolio, I'm at $103,641.89. I received a total of $16,313.62 in passive income or dividends. So again, I have I'm right at the almost at the 100 mark with my holdings. I can only have 100 on M1 finance. I do do need to do a little bit of trimming. And and I do need to add some of the yield max ETFs, the ones that are doing really good once M1 Finance adds them. So that needs to be taken into consideration because I need some turbocharged uh, passive income to grow my dividend portfolio. So that is very clear. I'm using the passive income of the yield max ETFs to turbocharge my dividend portfolio. Now my dividend portfolio, I'm at $103,641.89. I would not be able to have this amount of holdings in a M1 finance dividend portfolio unless if I was getting some serious firepower. Now, it's not guaranteed firepower, but I can tell you, and if you watch my previous videos, and again, my videos are free for you. Most people will charge you uh, money on a Patreon account um, to watch their private videos of like dividend stocks they own and their moves. I'm doing it free for you. So this is my dividend investing journey. So I want to show you how much I earned with the Yield Max ETFs and what they bought me. And I'm going to provide my rationales with some of the dividend stocks, the new dividend stocks they bought. So look at this. NVDY paid me $469.22 in dividends. FBY paid me $788. I'm going to be throwing $1,500 in FBY. CONY paid me $933.67. PSLY paid me $34.15. Now Tesla's taking a beating. Tesla is bleeding. I'm not going to touch TSLY till I feel confident in buying that. Yes, um, I do believe that TSLY is directly correlated with Tesla. If Tesla didn't suck, TSLY didn't suck. So that's the risk of the yield max ETFs. If these um, stocks that they kind of follow. Now, they're not actual shares of the stocks. Just remember that. But they are directly correlated. If things are going well, they go well. If they suck, the ETF sucks. Look at TSLY. TSLY had a reverse stock split. They could have a second one. But CONY, FBY, NVDY are doing really well. TSLY I'm kind of avoiding right now. So I'm going to show you my buys on April 8th real quick. I bought $62.51 with Philip Morris, $62.50 with Altria, $62.31 with Chevron. Chevron's a new ad that I have, and Nike are, is a new ad that I had. I'm going to provide my rationales to you guys why I bought 
Chevron, and Nike. But I'm going to show you what the passive income of the Yield Max ETFs bought me. Bought me $130.83 of Medtronic. It bought me $193.82 of Nike. It bought me $194.09 of Philip Morris. $122.17 of Fidelity National Financial. $194.83 of Chevron. $82.11 of McDonald's. $128.03 in Kimberly Clark. $80.47 in Procter Gamble. $124.13 Rexford in, um, Industrial Realty. And $194.38 in Chevron. So, again, with this passive income of the Yield Max ETFs, they're doing the work for me. Now, it would be beautiful if I made $1,000, I'm, I'm sorry, $2,000 a month with the Yield Max ETFs in the Defiance ETFs, but that's not a guarantee. But I'm again, that income is turbocharging it. They can go, they can be, go, they can go kaputs like TSLY. So you have to be aware of that. I'm going to take the risk. I got the money to do it. I'm single. I'm a travel nurse. I got the income to take a big risk like this. And of course, I'm uh, reinvesting my dividends. And by the way, with Procter & Gamble, I'm pretty sure they have VIX Vapor Rub. I'm using that right now. I got another bug, probably from getting it from a patient in the hospital. So let's go over Nike and Chevron. Nike has taken a beating, and I'm capitalizing. Again, I need to have a combination of dividend growth stocks, really good ones, low dividend yield, and high yield dividend stocks. Dividend yield is 1.63%, a PE ratio of 26.77. Average volume, 10.52 million. The market cap is 137.35 billion US dollars. Its year range is 88.66 to 128.68. Day range is 89.87 to 91.16. Previous close is 90. Look, I have the high yield dividend stocks, the business development companies, but with these guys and Nike, Starbucks, Kroger, all these really good dividend growth stocks taking a beating, I have to focus a little bit on dividend growth. Now, some things can happen with the stock market, but right now it ain't looking good, and I'm capitalizing on these dividend stocks going down. I have to finalize a few things, and I will be throwing in $500 a week again. So I'm hoping in the next two to three months that's going to happen. I'm planning on being um, debt-free with student loans and go from there and start throwing in that money. So let me show you its revenue trends and dividend history. Now its revenue has increased significantly. So annually in millions US dollars, 2013, 25,000, 2014, 27,000, 2015, 30,000, 2016, 32,000, 2017, 34,000, 2018, 36,000, 2019, 39,000, 2020, a little bit down, 37,000, 2021, 44,000, 2022, 46,000, 2023, 51,000. Now, let me provide to you my rationales as to why I'm buying them. One, negative energy out there. This wokeism is really causing a problem with them. They're generating revenue. Their dividend growth is solid. People wear Nike stuff like crazy. The Nike logo is in college football. Nike logo is everywhere. People wear Nike. Nike is not going anywhere. So that's one thing that attracted me to them. And plus this negative energy is giving them a beating. And they ain't going anywhere. I don't care if people protest Nike. I don't care if people don't want to buy Nike for a week. They ain't going anywhere. Now let's jump to their dividend history. So I'm going to go over their dividend history. It's a quarterly dividend. 16 cents in 2016, 2017, 18 cents. 2018, 20 cents. 2019, 22 cents. 2020, 25 cents. Then in 2020, 28 cents. Then in 2021, 31 cents. 2022, 34 cents. Uh, and 2024, 37 cents. So 31 cents, 34, 37 cents. Dividend growth in five years is 10.90. Number of dividend increases in the last five years is five. Payout ratio is 41% according to Zacks. 
Their payout ratio currently sits at 41% of its earnings. That's not bad. I'll take that. It's less than 50%. You bought one share. You made $1.48 with a 1.64% dividend yield. Yes, the dividend yield is low, but guess what? Its dividend growth is in five years is 10.90%. That attracted me to them. I had to capitalize on them. Politics and business is a big problem. It provides negative energy. I capitalized. Now I'm going to jump to Chevron. Next one I capitalized on was Chevron. Sitting at 162, a dividend yield of 4.02%, a PE ratio of 14.25, average volume 8.67 million, market cap, whoop, accidentally hit that, the, my laptop, market cap is 300.88 billion US dollars. Year range is 139.62 to 172.88. Day range is 160.46 to 162.53. Previous close is 161.30. I'm like trying to do this with a brand new cold, trying to like, I'm like coughing a little bit. Ugh, what a pain in the butt. So literally, it is not keeping up with the S&P 500 right now. I'm capitalizing. Another thing is they do have some charging stations. So they are expanding a little bit into this, um, you know, again, uh, they're a big company and they are adapting and I had to capitalize on Chevron. So I'm going to jump to the revenue trends and dividend history. So we're going to start in 2016. Annual data, millions of US dollars. 2016, 114. 2017, 141. 2018, 166. 2019, 146. 2020, major dip, 94. 2021, 162. 2022, 246. 2023, 200. So a huge increase from 2016 to 2023. And then I'm going to jump to the dividend history. Now I had to be a little diversified and I had to finalize my dividend portfolio with some diversification. So I had to. I really do. A lot of sectors too. So quarterly dividend 2014, $1. 107. A little stagnant from 2014 to 2016. Then it jumped to 108 in 2017. Then it jumped to 112 in 2018. Then 2019, 119. Then in 2020, 129. Then in 2021, 134. 2022, 142. 2023, 151. 2024, 163. Payout ratio is less than 50% per ZAX. Number of dividend increases in the last five years is five. Dividend growth in five years is 6.06%. If you bought one share, you made $6.52 with a 4.04% dividend yield. This is my retirement pension. I am a dividend investor. I like high yield dividend stocks. I want my high yield dividend stocks to buy the dividend growth stocks like these, like Nike, like Starbucks, like Medtronic, like Prologis. But my focus right now, I it, it just because of the market right now, I got to capitalize on some of these stocks just not rebounding too fast. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to flip it and go back to my high yielders because once I get to, you know, that 400 share target in phase two, there's going to be a lot of dividend stocks that high yielders, I'm going to get to 400 shares. And then I may not have to never touch anything again with my M1 finance dividend portfolio and just let the dividends do the work for me. Like the dividend portfolio right now, being on $100,000 is like a hamster spinning on a wheel and it's going and it's going and it's going. And most of the dividend stocks I added, the revenue has done well, dividend growth has done well. I cannot wait in the next 25 years or so turbocharging this dividend portfolio. It can be realistic now that I can make a lot, more than 20,000 in dividends, more than 30,000 in dividends, maybe more than 70 or $80,000 in dividends if I stick to this strategy. Now, I can't guarantee I'll reach that, but I'm going to keep on going. And that 50 cent phrase, get rich or die trying, I'm going. Being single, no kids, I'm going. Travel, nursing, I'm going. Yes, and probably 
Um, the rates are going to start going down being a travel nurse, and I will transition to being a nurse practitioner. I know I graduated in August nurse practitioner school, but I'm precepting a new graduate nurse. I'm enjoying that. This is like the most fun I've ever had being a nurse these past two years. And it all started from travel nursing. We're working with great people, great management, and um, it's just different. It's really different, and I'm really enjoying this. So I want to enjoy this possibly till the end of the year. Transition as um, a nurse practitioner, use that passive income as a nurse practitioner to build up my dividend portfolio. Do a little bit with a my IRAs. That way I can start using that money into other things and earn a lot more passive income. So if you're new to this YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so don't miss future videos. I will have a video for you on Friday. You guys take care and have a good one. And yes, I will be a lot more active on my YouTube channel. You need to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos starting Friday. Take care. And I'm going to jump to my disclaimer. So as a reminder, this is a disclaimer. Do not use my YouTube channel for any form of financial advice. It's strictly for entertainment purposes only. Do not use my YouTube channel for any form of tax purposes. This is strictly for entertainment purposes. It is best to seek financial advice from a financial advisor or somebody certified to give financial advice or a tax advisor for, to get tax advice. Investing is a big risk. You can gain money, you can lose money. So again, use my YouTube channel for entertainment purposes only. You gotta do your due diligence when you invest. You can gain money, you can lose money. So you, you don't have to buy what I'm buying. I'm just being very transparent with you Everybody has a different dividend investing strategy. I'm unique. I'm in a spot where I can live my life and throw money in. You know, having more than 90 some shares, that's a big risk. If you don't have the income, possibly, you don't have to do what I do. You guys take care and have a good one.